Like, what a blessing. Like, this is so amazing. Mm -hmm. oh. You know what I'm going to do? Mm -hmm. like well. You mentioned, you know, obviously wanting to go earlier in the draft. With me, it was just kind of like I had to get away from it. You know, I was pissed off, and I really didn't want to uh, hurt a lot of people's feelings because I was mad. So uh, I kind of just got in my own area and uh, just kind of stayed quiet and patient. And eventually, I knew my name would be called. All right, guys. The Chiefs added another cornerback in round four and a giant literally of an offensive tackle in round five of the 2022 NFL draft today. So I want to talk about it. But first, how about those? <laughs> What's up, guys? My name is Cole, and I do daily news about the Chiefs and the NFL overall, so sub if you are new. Hit that like button if you're happy that the Chiefs are shoring up some O-line depth, especially considering Niang's injury, and let's get into these fourth and fifth round draft picks. The 135th pick of the 2022 NFL draft was cornerback Joshua Williams out of Fayetteville State. He's a very big physical corner, six foot two, 195 pounds with 33 inch long arms. Shortly after being drafted, he tweeted out, blessed to be a part of Chiefs Kingdom. So yeah, he is a very physical guy, phenomenal athlete, and a definite standout corner. But I will say, he's not the fastest guy in town. He ran a 4.5140, so that's a bit of concern. But I think the hope is that his physicality and ability to cover closely and aggressively will help make up for the fact he's not as fast as lightning. He's very good off the line of scrimmage, so that is a definite plus. He had a good performance at the Senior Bowl, which probably helped his draft stock, and during his 2021 senior season for the Broncos, he tallied 31 tackles, three interceptions, and six pass breakups in nine games. And get this, he's the first player drafted from a historically black college and university since the 2020 draft. Yeah, nobody from an HBCU college was drafted in 2021. So you absolutely love to see that. So yeah, the Chiefs are definitely going to be pulling this guy in and raising him up in a similar fashion they did with Shavarius Ward. Is he as good right now as Ward was when he first joined the Chiefs? Good question, Cole. I'm glad you asked because I'm not 100% sure, but it's got to be pretty close. They see something in him worth going and getting him in the fourth round. So let's go. Let's get it. He sure has a lot of promise and the Chiefs are very good at developing corners. We have a lot of late round corners that have been successful starters over the years and even specifically within recent draft classes. You have Rashad Fenton who was selected 201st overall in the sixth round in 2019 and Legereus Sneed who was picked 138th overall in 2020. Just three picks after we selected Josh Williams this year at pick 135. So they've been able to have some real success with corners in later rounds and I'm excited to have this guy on the team. Corner was a position that I definitely was nervous about going into the draft, but in Veach, we trust. With the addition of Josh Williams and Trent McDuffie, things are definitely looking better here for sure. I think Williams will see a lot of special team snaps and will definitely see the field from time to time in the secondary as they work with him and develop him. I doubt he becomes an instant starter, but he's definitely a valuable depth piece with the chance to grow and develop under the Chiefs coaching staff. Dane Brugler had him listed as the 12th ranked cornerback and had a third round grade on him, so a steal of a pick in the fourth for sure. Okay, and before I talk about our next pick, it's interesting to note how we got him in the first place. Yesterday, the Chiefs traded back in the second round from pick 50 to 54 with the Patriots in exchange for a fifth round pick and they still selected who they wanted, which was wide receiver Sky Moore at pick 54. Here we go. The Chiefs select Sky Moore, dude. All right, let's go, baby. Pick in the 2022 NFL Draft, the Kansas City Chiefs select Sky Moore. <laughs> And then last night during Veach's presser, he said they really wanted a fifth round pick and may, in fact, use it to trade up today. And well, that is exactly what they did. The Chiefs traded up from 158 and gave up pick 233 and 158 to get to number 145 and selected Kentucky tackle Darian Kennard. How does it feel to uh, be the newest member of the Chiefs? Feels good, man. Got a lot to prove, you know. Uh, coming in, got to turn a lot of heads and I got to prove a lot of people wrong, so... 
It's time to step up. We've got a lot of grinding to do, and we're about to hit the, hit the ground running next week. Who was a three-year starter at right tackle in college and had a PFF offensive grade of at least 89.2 in each year. And per PFF, Kennard is one of the most accomplished run blockers at the tackle position in college football. Even though he may end up at guard, potentially, he earned 89.0 plus run blocking grades over the past three seasons. This man is one big physical beast at six foot five, 322 pounds, and 35 inch arms. Kennard might be asked to play inside at the next level and gives the Chiefs position flexibility. And my guess is the Chiefs like what they see and he will definitely be competing for the right tackle spot while also having the ability to provide some rotational depth as well on the inside of this offensive line. He does have some struggles because of his size. He's not the most athletic guy in the world and struggles especially keeping guys at bay in the passing downs, especially as the play extends, but is very good at using his size and strength to dominate in the run game. Charles Goldman from Chiefs Wire has this to say about Kennard. One thing you'll never have to worry about, though, is his potential in the running game. Kennard is a mauler type who looks to bury defenders every time he gets his hands on them. Pair him with Trey Smith on the right side of the offensive line, and the running backs are going to be truly pleased with their results. From a personnel standpoint, this is a smart move for Kansas City. They needed to hedge their bets at the offensive offensive tackle position with the injury to Lucas Niang. Despite a positive update, there is no way, and I agree, to know if he'll be ready to contribute at the start of the season. Kennard also has the flexibility to kick inside and play some guard, which reinforces the depth the team has in a big way. So yeah, this is a great value for a fifth round pick for sure. I will say though, Kennard himself did not seem the happiest in the world about how late he was selected. He was interviewed recently after getting drafted and said he's disappointed he didn't get drafted sooner thought he should have, but he said he will follow Trey Smith, who slid in last year's draft, and basically he said, I'm going to play pissed, and followed it up with, I can't wait to play other teams, so just put it that way. So yeah, Hulk, mad, and Hulk is about to smash. And Hulk. <sighs> smash. Prior to the draft, I predicted a later round offensive tackle, or at least said we really need to draft a good one, and we got one, folks. Niang is not a sure thing on the right side, and yes, we did sign Andrew Wiley, but it's only to a one-year deal, so I am happy about this one. So far, we have made six picks, four on the defensive side and two on the offensive side. You have cornerback Trent McDuffie, edge George Karloftis, wide receiver Sky Moore, safety Brian Cook, cornerback Joshua Williams and outside tackle Darian Kennard. What do you think of these picks so far? Are you, like me, happy that we are continuing to shore up the defense? Do you wish we would have grabbed somebody else? Let me know your thoughts in the comments down below. And don't forget, we have four seventh round picks that are coming up right now as I'm recording this video. The seventh round is about to start here in a minute, but I wanted to get this out to you all so you can have an update. So yeah, make sure to sub for more daily news like this and check out this video here, which covers our second and third round picks from last night in case you missed it. I'll definitely drop a video on our seventh round picks either tonight or tomorrow. But until next time, let's go. Let's go. How about those? <laughs>